Hey y'all! Why do I start my videos like that now? Does that make a new thing? Welcome to this video. So today I'm gonna be filming an updated of an op an updated version of one of my old videos. Obviously you've read the title. <laughs> you already know what this video is, but I'm just gonna explain it quickly and get into the video. I know it's gonna be a really long one, so I'm gonna try and hurry up and not ramble on even though that's what I'm doing right now. What is my problem? Today's video is an updated version of my video from like a year and a half ago, or not a year and a half, like a year, a bit over a year ago, in that facial feminization makeup. And thank you so much for the support on that video it means a lot but yeah that was over a year ago and i still get loads of comments and stuff on that video so i thought i would make an updated version because it has been so long a lot has changed if you would like to learn how to feminize your face keep watching this video ah! if you enjoyed this video leave a like it would help out my channel so much and i would really appreciate it if you could do that for me if you have any questions just leave them down below and i'll be responding subscribe we're almost at 4k let's go yeah i think that's everything i want to say so enjoy the video let's get into it so yeah, I'm gonna start with primer. Primer's debated, I feel like. Some people need it, some people don't. So if you have bigger pores and you feel like you have texture and when you finish your makeup you can still see your pores, then try a primer. Sometimes I use one, sometimes I don't. Because I do have really big pores. But like I said, I go back and forth. Sometimes I feel like it does nothing and I'm like, fuck primer. But today I'm gonna use the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. And it's literally like a tiny little sample size. Ooh! Ah, and you don't need to put it on your whole face. Where I put mine is over my nose especially. Like I have giant fucking holes in my face. And then just some all in the T-zone. And I like to tap it in because since we're filling in those pores, you're kind of like trying to push it in. Push it in! Push it in! And then it's best to leave primer to sit for a little bit so that it sets in place and it doesn't just mix in with the next products that you put on. So I'm gonna use this time to open my Red Bull. A very important makeup step. I feel like I literally don't do my makeup without energy drink. If I don't have a Red Bull, then I'm not doing my makeup, period. And that's on a period. I have already done all my skincare. I'm just gonna put on some lip balm now. My lips get corrupted. So next is colour corrector. I'm gonna use the LA Girl Pro Conceal in the Reddish Corrector. My hair looks greasy, I just washed it. Bitch. And colour corrector, in case you don't know, I'm gonna be going into like crazy detail in this video just to explain everything so you have a full understanding of everything if you need it. Colour corrector, like the name might suggest, it collects, it corrects your colours. The different coloured colour correctors are meant to do different things based on the colour wheel. They cancel out the opposite colour basically. Red slash orange peach colour correctors are to cancel out darkness. If you have like a five o'clock shadow under eye bags, if you get darkness on the side of your nose, if you have any dark spots on your face in general, that is what colour corrector is good for cancelling out. Cancel me mom. I'm gonna try and go quickly because this video is gonna be super long. I'm gonna try and make it less long than my last one. Ooh. I like to use two different coloured foundations and I do put the darker one around the outside of my face and then the lighter one on the inside which will give you like a pre-contour. Both of them are Milani Concealer and Perfect 2 in 1 Foundation and Concealer and the first one I'm putting on here is 0910. So this foundation is quite dark for me but it's not going to stay this colour. I'm going to use a really bright concealer later on and brighten everything up and at the end it will end up being the right colour because I going with brightening powders, setting powders, baking powders, brightening concealer, which all lighten the foundation. So I like to go in with a darker foundation first so that it doesn't end up too light at the end because I do brighten so much to reshape my face. I only use one pump of that darker foundation for the outside of my face because I don't need as much coverage and I found that my makeup actually looks a bit better if I use a little bit less product even though I'm still a coverage Hello. And I do like 
a strong ass coverage. So this foundation that I'm putting in the middle is the same one, but the colour is 08 Light Tan. For concealer, I'm using the Tarte Shape Tape in the colour Fair. So I don't use too much of this, this is just the first layer of concealer. And I just dot it in the places where I need a first little bit of coverage. The way I place this is just in the areas that I want to brighten to re start reshaping my face. I'm giving you pretty much FFS without surgery, although surgery helps. And I'm a big fan. So I'm going to quickly run through the basics of female face shapes and what the typical proportions of the differences between girl faces and boy faces are. Obviously this doesn't apply to everyone, some girls won't have these, some girls will, some girls it doesn't matter, some girls have the opposite. This is just like the blueprint, the pink print. Just say what they are, bitch. Please stop talking. Girls tend to have a smaller forehead around the hairline, higher eyebrows, a smaller nose, fuller cheeks, bigger lips, a smaller gap between your nose and your lips. <laughs> so weird. Just cut that out. Cut the camera, dead ass. Cut the cameras. Dead ass. Smaller chin, smaller jaw. Boys have longer, squarer faces and bigger heads. Girls have more rounded, less long faces in general. So those are the basics of what we're trying to achieve today. Next, I'm gonna go in and start contouring. I start with my nose contour because I like for it to dry down so it doesn't blend out too much later on. Now I did just do a really in-depth nose contour video. So if you want nose contour specifically super in-depth, you can watch that video. So I keep the lines really close to the centre of my nose to make it look smaller. I feel like I can kind of do this in my sleep now. The concealer I'm using is LA Girl again in the colour Beautiful Bronze. I could spend hours like trying to perfect this, but you need to move on, bitch. Now for the contour on the rest of my face, I use Milani Conceal and Perfect, but this time it's in a stick form. This is the colour Coco. This is where you really start sculpting out your face to be more feminine and more what you want, what you like, whatever. We're gonna make our forehead shorter and rounder and smaller looking. Pretty much draw on the shape of the forehead that I want. Now I don't mind really having a big forehead. I feel like it fluctuates. Sometimes I feel like my forehead's giant. Sometimes I feel like it's disappeared. I more wanna like bring it in this way. <gasps> oh, fuck. This way. <gasps> fuck. Ew. I dropped my contour stick. Like how disgusting that is. Oh my god, that's so upsetting. That's so upsetting. <gasps> Why did bad things happen to good people? It's what she deserves. Oh my god. Okay, so cheek contour. I don't contour too much because my cheeks are good. <laughs> They're quite full. But we move. And I feel like too much cheek contour can ruin your makeup and look really obvious and ugly. So I just put a little bit on each side, a little bit under my lip. So my two favourite things to contour for my face are my nose and my chin and my jaw. One, two, three, four, five, six. So for my chin, I don't really mind the size of it, it's more the shape. So I'm going for a smaller, more defined, more pointed, feminine chin. I'm not trying to make it shorter really, I'm trying to make it smaller this way. So since I'm not shortening it, I don't put contour right in the centre here, I put it more on the sides. Oh, tap it on because I don't want to put too much on. Again, kind of drawing on this face shape that I want to have. I'm leaving the point in the middle highlighted and I'm putting the contour on the sides to kind of cut away at that. So a typical girl jaw is smaller than a boy jaw, but it is very on trend and attractive and appreciated by the media or whatever. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. To have a defined chin still. So I want to make it smaller, but I still want to make it defined. So I go up to the corner and I go up. Can you see? So I kind of make a square, but I like, I am bringing this up here and bringing my face in, which will make my face look slimmer, my jaw slimmer. I'm gonna shut the fuck up. 
sorry. Fuck sake, stop doing that. It's not cute and it's not funny. My cheek contour, I forgot to say earlier. Higher cheekbones are like, kind of like model cheekbones. So they're higher and more defined, but that's not what's considered the most like feminine. A feminine kind of cheek is more considered to be bigger cheeks. So I contour my cheeks kind of lower because I don't want to lift them up too much. And also if they're too high, it will make your jaw look bigger, which is not what you want. So if your contour's lower, it will like reduce the space between your cheeks and your jaw, which will make your jaw look smaller. And then if you have an Adam's apple, a little trick you can do to contour it is to just do like a triangle going from under your chin down your neck to the point of your Adam's apple. The way you see your Adam's apple is because light hits it and makes the point like stand out. So if you're contouring it, you're like counteracting the light so it will kind of blend in more. So now I've been talking for like two hours and this probably won't blend out. I'm going in with a Morphe M436 brush. We are gonna go in with concealer afterwards to kind of reshape everything and fix any mistakes and brighten and stuff. So I kind of like for it to go from my earlobe, not my earlobe, what's this called? My trachea? My tragus? My something. The middle bit of your ear. I like it to go from there kind of to the corner of your mouth, although I don't actually bring it all that way because I want to keep the centre of my face quite bright to make it look smaller. So I want most of the darkness to be around my face to make my face look smaller. So I start tapping it. So I feel like you have more control when you tap it and you can blend it up kind of slower and then kind of blend it up to make it look like a shadow. It's meant to be darkest at the bottom and then blend out to light. Um, and now can the... Mm, my face is itchy. The contour under your lip is going to make your lip look bigger because it's creating more of a shadow. As if your bottom lip is so big it's creating a shadow under your lip. We will go everything with so we will go over everything with a cream contour in a minute. With a with a concealer, sorry. So we but so we will go over everything with a concealer in a second. What am I talking about? We will go over over everything later with powder contour. Okay, so that's the basics of the contour done for the cream contour. Next, I'm gonna go in with another layer of concealer. So this is just going to brighten up the centre of my face again and kind of cut the contour where you want to cut it and re-brighten the areas you want to brighten. Just making sure that isn't expired because I have literally had it for like a year. Six months! I don't want to brighten too much otherwise It'll just be too bright. I am so powerful. My mind, oh, it amazes me sometimes. So I just put a dot in my forehead to brighten up the centre of my forehead again. Under my eyes because a, I really like a bright under eye. It's like really opens up your eyes and brings your face into the centre and like, you know what I mean? And then around my nose because I get darkness there and it's going to bring my contour in on my nose. I like to put a dot here because that's going to highlight my cheeks again and bring them out and make my face look rounded but sculpted at the same time. A little dot on my chin. Again, on the chin, really don't put a lot. Don't, don't do it. So just try to clean up the cheeks and the jaw contour. I bring it down to the point of my chin again to like pointify my chin. And then I blend this out over here and kind of use that to cut the cheek contour. And this is also gonna kind of soften your jaw contour because I have been known to go a bit too ham on the jaw contour. <laughs> Again, I'm pressing really lightly because you don't want to cover it. You're just trying to kind of soften it. And then up the sides of my nose. I feel like the real center of your face is where you can go ham with concealer because I love to have a really bright Center of my face. I feel like I can hear someone in my house. Call the police. I'm calling the police. The concealer that I put here, I'm using to lift up my eyes and my cheeks and just like pull my face up. It's so hot. I swear there's someone in my house. We need to call the police. 
I'm scared. Did you guys hear that? I'm scared. Oh my god, can you hear that car alarm? It literally goes off every single day, at least once. Probably like at least five times a day. I'm so baffled. What's the point? What was the reason? Whose car is it? Ma'am? It is ma'am! Concealer's all blended out now. I'm just gonna go in with the other side of the beauty blender that has nothing on it and use that to kind of blend anything that needs to be further blended. And like I said, you want the darkest part of your cheek contour to be the bottom because that's what mimics a shadow. The darkest shadow is at the bottom and then it fades up as it like comes to the actual cheeks. It's honestly, how fucking hot is it? I have to say this in every video. I'm either too hot or too cold. Bitch, it's only 22 degrees. Why am I crying? Because <coughs> they are dying. There's people that are dying. Ew. Now everything is blended exactly how I want it. Sure, Jan. Bronzers and brightening powders will blend everything better and intensify what needs to be intensified, whatever. We'll get to that. So if anything still looks a little crazy, I can and I will fix it. These lights are so bright though, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes. Anyway, so the last thing I blend is my nose contour, which I don't actually blend. Now that my beauty blender's kind of covered in foundation and concealer and all of that, I kind of just tap over the nose contour to cover it in a light layer of that concealer, which will cover it so that it's not an obvious just line sat on your face, but it won't blend it out. It'll stay exactly where you put it and it will make it look really defined and it will sit really nicely under the rest of the makeup that we're going to put on. This is when I go in with powder. So I use RCMA No Colour Powder quite generously. Oh bitch. And I like to spill it everywhere because that's just how I do. There. I'm putting this all over my face. I'm just putting a good amount of powder everywhere. You really don't want anything to rub off or move around or go any type of ways. So now I'm set. I'm all set. We're set to go. <coughs> Bitch, shut up. Who's she even connected to? Next, we're going to continue contouring. I'm using the shade Samba from the Kat Von D palette to contour my nose on this cheap little shitty brush from an Amazon brush pack. Over exactly the same place that I put my cream contour, because that's where I want my contour to be. The closer to the centre of your nose that you put your contour, the more smaller your nose will look. So I'll just pick up a little bit because we're doing multiple layers of contour with the cream and the powder and I'm going to go in with another powder. You don't need to do too much at each step because you don't want it to be crazy dark. Then I go in with the shade Subconscious from the palette on a tiny skinny little Sigma small tape and blending brush. B45. And then I go over that again with that one. I'm going in with the darker, like the different shades of contour and the darker contour. It's just going to give your nose dimension. You know what I mean? It's like you're painting a picture of a pretty girl with a pretty nose. You can't just go in with two colours. Well, you can. You can just do one. But if you blend, if you work on if you use multiple colours. That you, um, you had, you, you, you could, you do, you, you want. It's like giving your nose painting realism. Hello, I'm Bob Ross. I'd like to welcome you to the joy of painting. And this one, I really try and keep as close to the centre as possible. The more you bring contour outwards, the more you're going to make your nose look bigger instead of smaller. Because I want to make my nose look as small as possible. Some people do like subtle nose contours where it doesn't really make your nose smaller, it just kind of gives it definition. I'm trying to go in, I'm trying to go all the way in, make my nose literally like suffocate. <coughs> Next, obviously it looks really dark because I haven't done the rest of my powder contour. <coughs> and, and also I'm going to cover it with brightening powders and stuff which will so don't be alarmed by how dark it is right now. I feel like the nose contour is the only contour that's like necessary to have the perfect colour. If your nose contour looks janky, then your whole face looks janky because 
it's in the middle of your face. You need to get the right colours, the right shape, the right everything, or it's gonna look fugly. She is a fugly slap. Do not trust her. This girl is the nastiest skank bitch. Do not trust her. She is a fugly slut. Um, what am I talking about? Um, I'm just gonna go with Sombra again, which is the first one I used on my nose. Put that on the outsides of my forehead, in the corners to make it round and bring it in. And then I blend out the rest really with a really light hand. Really keeping it on the outside of my face, I'm not really gonna bring it into the middle. And then same with my... I like never, I feel like in all of my videos, I never ever sit in the center of the camera. I'm always off to the side like this. Like, I don't know why, I don't know who I think I am, but I need to just behave and learn how to use a camera and where to sit and not be a dumb bitch and make better quality videos. He trying to 16 and I said, cause she called him puppy with the attack in me, Rocky. I'm pretty much just going over exactly the same place that I had my cream contour. Don't pick up too much product because you don't want it to look like crazy. And I definitely struggle with that sometimes. I'm not gonna front like my makeup's always perfect. Just do your best, you know? You're all beautiful in your own way. Have a lot of feeling. She doesn't even go here. And then again, especially because I kind of covered it with the concealer earlier, I bring that contour up um, in front of my ear to kind of cut off the outside of the lower half of my face. I love under lip contour. You can just never make your lips look too big, can you? Sometimes I interchange the next two steps, which are bronzing and brightening powder. Recently, I've started doing brightening first and then bronzing to kind of tone down the brightening. It depends how bright you want to be. But I'm trying to tone it down a bit. Because in some of my pictures, the centre of my face is literally like... Bright as f So, bitch. And the brightening powder I use isn't actually brightening powder, it's a foundation powder. It's um the MAC Studio Fix foundation powder. Studio Fix something in the colour NC15. Never pick up too much product on your brush because you can always pick up more and re-intensify stuff but it's a lot harder if you pick up too much product and go crazy and hang. It's harder to tone it down after. So I kind of focus that on my nose up against the contour without going over it yet to suck it in more and then I bring it up to the tops of my cheeks to lift them up and widen the centre of my face. And I kind of blend it over the apples to like, the apples of my cheeks to, again, make my cheeks look fuller and bigger. Bitch, I've been filming for so long and I'm on contour still. This video is gonna be so long, I apologise. Then I like to put brightening powder under my nose. A tiny bit in the centre of my forehead. Whatever's left on the brush, I put a little bit on my chin and then bring a little bit up here, just to be extra. And then again, not picking up any more product, I kind of go over the nose contour to make it look like there's no contour there. Like that's just your tiny little natural nose. Next! I might go get another red ball. <laughs> Yo to the low. Then, like I said, the brightening is a bit intense for me now. Like I feel like I look a bit... Ghostly. So um, I'm gonna go in with some bronzer. This is Hula bronzer from Benefit. And I'm using a Morphe something brush. The label's gone from it. It might say R7, probably. <gasps> Every fucking time, why does it scare me? Kinda rude. The bronzer I just kinda put wherever I feel like I need it. If anywhere's too bright, or anywhere needs to like be blended, you know. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it. I am Nicki Minaj, I'm at the dude's up. That coops up and chuck the juice up. Chuck the juice up. <gasps> I just felt my red go everywhere. Why? Why? What have I done to deserve this? Oh my god. Okay, 
<laughs> a lot has happened. It seems to you like nothing. It just went like that. What's not clicking? What's not clicking? But it's been like 10 minutes. I spilled my Red Bull. I cleaned it up. I had some nice bubbles ASMR playing for me. So now I'm gonna go in with my blush. I like to go quite ham with the blush. I don't know why I've started saying ham. So with blush, I focus most of it on the apples of my cheeks. This will bring life back to your face and it will blend your contour into your highlights. It will make your face look like it has colour again. I feel like it makes it look like you're wearing less makeup, but maybe that's just me being crazy. I kind of put it over everywhere that I contour. Uh, where's my cat crying? Next is a highlight. This highlight is the Shimmer and Shine Splendid. A whole new world. Yes. I don't know why my cat's crying. Hey, but I'm filming the video. Shut up. Look, guys, I've never shown you my cat. This is my kitty. Tigger. Mm. He looks so sad. Maybe because I'm holding him hostage. Mm. He's just crying because he's needy and wants attention. Like his mummy. Anyway, back to the makeup. I don't want the video to be 10 hours of footage. I'm using the Adult Beauty Highlight and Shine Bright. You better stop. Oh, look how perfect that is. I love how tiny my nose looks. Catfish. Then I like to set my face with setting spray before I do the rest of my highlight. Feels so good. <sighs> Fuck, I got it all in my hair. I always smack myself in the face when I do this. Period. Ariana. The fixing, the fixing spray I use is the Revolution Matte Fix Oil Control Fixing Spray. My favourite one I think is the Urban Decay All Nighter, but I'm poor, so never again. I wish I was good at accents. I feel like it does take forever to dry then. That's probably just because I've unloaded half the bottle on my face. I feel like there's alcohol in this though, because my lips always taste like alcohol after. Oh yeah, they make alcohol in it. Anyway, now that it's been 20 more minutes and my sink spray is dry, I go in with highlight. You really don't need a lot because it is so fucking blinding. And I don't like to have a crazy, crazy highlight. Kind of crazy, but not too crazy, you know? Just like the right kind of crazy, just like me. I highlight my cupid's bow. I don't like to really contour my cupid's bow because I like to keep the center of my face really bright. I keep hearing sounds like there's someone in my house. We have to call the police. And it's freaking me the fuck out. Next, I'm gonna do brows off camera because that would make the video another 20 minutes longer. But if it's something that you guys do wanna see, leave a comment and I might film a separate brow video. <laughs> Don't judge my brows. I'm really not good at brows, so... I look fucking crazy. The basics of feminine brows basically are just slightly lifted, higher, thin, and not too thick. Like me. Mm -hmm. My brows are kind of like my struggle zone because they're naturally very thick. They're not even, they are not twins, they are not sisters, they are not friends. They hate each other. I hate it! I fucking hate it! Period. Eyeshadow. I don't think there's really an eyeshadow necessary that's very feminine. You can carve them out to kind of like lift up your eyelid, which is what I'm going to show you what I do. What really does it for me is liner. So I'm going to start with highlight. It can have a lifting effect. I just put a little bit right under my brow. Then for eyeshadow, I'm literally just using my bronzer. Any light brown shadow will do. Any kind of transition shade. I have very hooded eyes quite saggy eyelids. I really wanted to get an eye lift. I'll put it on the list. So I kind of just ignore my actual crease and put all the shadow up here. And then I kind of go out from the corner and follow the same line from earlier where we did like the lifting highlighter concealer and stuff. 
and then just blend it through the whole crease. Make sure you blend it into your nose so it all connects and looks natural. <laughs> natural. JK. But you didn't say JK though. And that's all I really do for eyeshadow. Drinking water? Oh my god. I'm not the best with eyeliner either. I feel like anything that requires like precision and like steady hands I struggle with because my hands are literally like at all times. Probably because I drink 15 Red Bulls a day. Allegedly. Allegedly. Because of my ugly ass eyelids, I have to do my eyeliner quite crazy. So what I like to do to get the perfect angle for me, go from the corner of my eye and use the angle that my actual eyelid is going up, you're gonna continue that angle outwards and that's what's gonna make it look like your eye is longer. So I get to the outer point of it and then I bring it back kind of straight towards my inner corner and I kind of do like a triangle. And my eyelids are super twitchy as well, which is really annoying. So I kind of work from each side, bringing them together to make a kind of like, Isosceles triangle. Is that the right one? Isosceles. Right angle. It's not a right angle. Is it cute? It's a cute triangle. It's the Tattoo All Proof Liner in real black and it's bomb. From. I always get confused. I think it's called Tattoo Tint, but on the thing it says for size. And it looks really crazy when I look like that. But when I look like regularly at you, it looks kind of normal, do you know what I mean? I like to extend the inner corner to elongate it even more. So the other eyeliner is done. The secret to getting even eyeliners is realising that no one gives a fuck if your eyeliner's even. And next I'm gonna take MAC Smolder Eye Pencil and I'm gonna tight line my upper waterline. I'm just gonna make it look more cohesive and everything will blend together nicely. I'm gonna tight line the whole waterline actually. Eyeliner is a real struggle for me because I have number one, shaky hands. Number two, the wateriest eyes you've ever encountered in your life. And then I'm just gonna take some of that bronzer again on a smudger brush. This one's the Morphe E16. And I'm just gonna Blend that under my eyes, make it out a little bit, nothing crazy. And this will suffer the inner waterline like black liner, because otherwise if it's just a random line and it's not blended at all into anything, it can look a bit mad. Now I'm just gonna do mascara and put on some lashes and I'll be back. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I've put them on wonky, but that's just how we do. These ones are Doll Beauty, Frankie and Kimberly stacked. And I like to like angle them up so they're nice and like lifted. It's time for lips. My favourite lip liner to use is NYX Natural Lip Liner. This is actually the first lip liner I ever bought. So it's stereotypically bigger lips are seen as very feminine. So I like to overdraw my lips a lot. Oh my god, okay. So in this video I'm not gonna cover my mouth as I'm doing it. I'm gonna make a proper effort. Proper. So, I like to kind of flatten my cupids bow. I feel like that makes your lips look bigger. So I go above my lip line. I like to make them quite round and pouty. And I overdraw the bottom lip as well, even more than the top lip, because often my top lip can end up looking bigger than my bottom lip, which is not what I prefer. Then once that's done, I like to use Jeffree Star Liquid Lipstick in Mannequin. And you can always go in with concealer and fix the lines if you want it to look really neat and precise. Now just make them look more perfect. And that's what we strive for here, perfection. JK. Nobody's perfect. I've gotta work it. Again and again till I get it right. Then I go in with Doll Beauty Get Lippy. And then I go in with Lip Gloss. This is NYX Butter Gloss in Madeline. Madeline. Oh, my eyes are watering. 
<laughs> Life is so unfair. And that's the makeup all done. I'm just gonna finish my hair and I'll be back for the outro. And here we are. This look is finished. This video is finished. And thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. I hope that it was a good video. I hope that you loved it. I hope that you learned how to feminize your face and that you can use these tricks to, what the fuck am I talking about? Hopefully it wasn't too long, even though I know that it was. If you did enjoy this, please leave a like. That would help me out so much and it would help my channel to grow, help me with that algorithm, you know what I mean? YouTuber things, so leave me a little like. Leave me a comment if there's any other videos you'd like me to do. Subscribe, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at the Phoebe Rose. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!